Hey guys, it's Hank from Sprues and Brews, and today we're going to be taking a look at the building, painting, and weathering process for this little 172 scale TBF Avenger. I just finished this up as a custom commission piece for a client, and I'm really happy with how it came out, so hopefully he is too. I also did an unboxing video for this Academy kit, so if you want to check that out, it's here. And make sure you stick around to the end to see the finished product. Okay, with all that said, let's get into the video. All right, as is standard with most aircraft kits, we're gonna start this one out with the cockpit. Let's get those parts off the sprue. Not too much going on for detail here, which can be expected in 172 scale, but let's make sure we clean those parts up well. As you can see here, we've got two seats in the main cockpit area, the first for the pilot and the second for the radio man slash bombardier slash ventral turret gunner. Here's our lone pilot figure. As I mentioned in the unboxing video, this kit only comes with one figure, but it's a crew of three in this aircraft, so we're gonna have to get creative. To make some friends for our lonely pilot figure, we're going to use some oven baked clay. You can pick this up at pretty much any craft store. I start by rolling a simple torso, trying to match the size and proportions of the figure that came with the kit. Next, we're going to make a skinny little snake here that will cut into two arms. And then we'll gently attach those to the torso and just kind of fold them over the lap. Nothing, nothing fancy there. We'll roll another slightly thicker snake for the legs, and we'll attach those in the same manner. Lastly, he could definitely use a head, so we'll roll a little clay ball and stick that on the top of the torso. Look how handsome he is already. I did notice his back was a little too large, so we did a quick trim, and there we go. We've got another figure. And check it out, he fits in the seat pretty well. I repeated that whole process one more time to make a second figure, and now we're going over to the oven. Preheat to 350, pop these guys in there for about 15 minutes. I am obviously no Michelangelo here, but it was fun to sculpt some figures. I think they came out pretty well, and at 172 scale, they are gonna work perfectly for our purposes. All right, with those guys sorted out, let's get back to construction. We're gonna put the cockpit components into the actual fuselage. All right, fast forward a little bit. Here's all of our interior parts inside the fuselage, including our figures. I decided to mount them because the painting process will be a little simpler that way. We're not gonna get too fancy because obviously there's not a ton of facial details at 172 scale. You can see here I also had to remove the legs on one of our DIY figures because he didn't quite fit in the turret there. I did some basic brush painting on the figures. As you can see here, I gave them some khaki flight uniforms, the yellow life jackets, and a little flesh tone for the face. Once you put the canopy on, as you can see here, you can't really see the details, so just a simple paint job works perfectly, and you can tell that there are actually crewmen in the plane, which is awesome. On to one of the more tedious parts of this build, masking the canopy. Usually when I make aircraft kits, I get the Edward prefab canopy mask kits, but unfortunately with this Academy set, they actually discontinued that. So I had to do this by hand. The liquid mask product I'm using here is from Vallejo. It's awesome stuff, I recommend picking some up. Works really well for me. All you gotta do is pick a nice and small paintbrush from your collection and sacrifice that to the masking gods because it's never gonna be the same. Just designate that as your mask brush and there you go. The only bummer with masking this way is that the lines are never gonna be as crisp as they would be with prefab masks or cut masks, but with a canopy like this, a greenhouse canopy with all these panels, I think it's a good way to go about it and it works pretty well. All right, with the canopy masked up and that turret masked up as well, I was able to seal up the fuselage halves. You can see that, that ball turret there in the back is all locked in now. That's masked up as well. And we're gonna move on to attach the wings. I like to use super glue when I attach wings, honestly, because it's a stronger fit. 
Um, it gives you a little bit more comfort knowing that nothing's gonna pop off on you down the road. And then I'll go back around the seams and just use a little plastic cement as you normally would just to really secure those up. All right, scary part here. The client wants this aircraft wheels up and in a flying position, so I'm gonna mount it on a little base. And what that means is we're gonna to need to drill a post into the bottom of the fuselage to display the aircraft. And when I said drill, I meant drill. We're gonna get the, the power drill down from the basement. We're gonna find a bit that matches our post size and we're gonna go right after it. This right here scared the hell out of me. Um, when the bit went through, the fuselage split a little bit, but fortunately I was able to get the X-Acto knife, clean that up a little bit, and it's sealed right back up, no problem. You can see here that black strip is just a little excess glue. And check it out, fits perfectly, looks awesome. Okay, after the hole was drilled, I attached the horizontal stabilizers, and now I'm gluing on the canopy. One of the fun things with that liquid mask is that it dries clear so you can kind of see through and see the, the figures there in the cockpit. Now we're gonna attach the landing gear. If you watch the unboxing video, you'll remember that this kit comes with two different sets of gear. Um, one set that I used here for the up position, the flying position, and then another set that you can put down if you want to display it on an aircraft carrier or something like that. With the gear on, that wraps up the build process. So now we're gonna move on to painting. Here I'm using Vallejo's flat black primer to just coat the whole thing, give us a nice base to work with. This beautiful little aircraft jig I've been using, by the way, is from my man over at Bulldog Models. He makes some awesome 3D printed modeling supplies. So if you haven't already, go check him out on Instagram, tell him I sent you and uh, say hey. All right, we've got our whole aircraft primed. Something special about this phase. I love when you when you prime a model, it looks so nice. Part of me wants to just leave it black like this, but I know you can't. Moving on to the actual paint. For the belly here, I'm using this ammo pale gray. I'm just gonna lightly dust this on in layers and build up that, that grayish white tone for the bottom of the aircraft. When it comes to the sides of the fuselage, I'm gonna try and achieve that scalloped wavy effect using the actual top color. So here, when you're using that light gray, just kind of pick the halfway mark on the fuselage and just paint everything below that. It's okay if some of it spills over onto the top because we're gonna cover that up with that blue. Okay, for this build, the client wants this in Battle of Midway era colors. So it's just gonna be the two-tone light gray on the bottom, intermediate blue on the top, not the tri-color with the dark navy that you see on the box art. So let's block in our intermediate blue here. As I mentioned, to achieve that wavy scalloped effect, I'm gonna do that with this top coat, this intermediate blue. Just tighten up the nozzle spray area and kind of paint that in to however it looks good to you. Nothing fancy here. I'm not gonna mask this off. I think it looks better freehand anyway. So just gonna paint that in. And here is our Avenger all painted up. Happy with how that scalloped line came out. I think it looks pretty cool and kind of matches the reference images I was looking at. Very subtle color shift here between the gray and the blue, but I think it looks perfect for this era aircraft paint. A few finishing touches here we need to paint in with our brush. I'm using a flat black for figures here and I am gonna paint in the MGs on the top here with the turret and on the bottom stinger turret. We'll also paint in our tires black, and I'm gonna do the inside of those wheel wells, just a, an aluminum, like a chrome look. 
With our painting complete, it is now decal time. As I hinted at before, since this is gonna be in a Battle of Midway scheme, most of the decals that come with the kit aren't gonna do it for us. So I need some early war star roundels without the, the bar behind them. I'm gonna use those from my Academy 172 Memphis Bell kit. And then I've got an Academy P51 kit, a Pacific P51 kit with some extra decals kicking around. And I think we're gonna be able to splice together the markings that we need from these. Important to note, before I moved on to the decals, I've clear-coated the entire vehicle with AK Intermediate Gauzy Agent. Shout out to Sprue Therapy on Instagram for the recommendation here. This stuff works great. Hadn't used it before, and the decals latch right on, sink right into those panel lines. So this might be my new go-to, go-forward for aircraft. So thanks, man, for the recommendation. This stuff's great. I'm also using handy-dandy Microset and Microsol. Love this stuff. Always good when you're doing decal work. Okay, so for the individual markings on this aircraft, I'm going for a certain Avenger that actually survived the Battle of Midway and made it back to Midway Island. The markings on that aircraft were 8-T-1, the 8 being the squadron, VT-8, that should have been aboard the USS Hornet, the T designating Torpedo, Torpedo Squadron, and the 1 being the number 1 aircraft in the formation. As I mentioned, I'm piecing this together from leftover decals in my spare box. Always important when you finish a kit, take all the decals you got left and put them in a bin somewhere because you never know when they're going to come in handy. This crossbar on the T here was actually just another one that was left over, so worked out pretty well. Convincing T. The dashes were also just cut up from a larger dash that would have been on a P-51 on the wing there, and I think it looks pretty good. Okay, on to weathering. Again, before we go to this phase, I coated the whole plane with a clear coat of AK Intermediate Gauzy Agent, and for this I'm using some Flory Wash. I'm still relatively new to using Flory Washes, but it's a really cool product. It's clay-based, which means that it's supposed to be a lot more user-friendly than some of the oil-based or lacquer or enamel-based washes. It's supposed to be a little less caustic on the paint. I've had some trouble with it in the past adhering to my clear coats, but with this AK Gauzy Agent, things worked really well, as you'll see in a bit here. Um, super happy with the end result. Once this product dries, you just wipe it off with a slightly damp paper towel, and look at that. That's awesome. All the clay just sinks into the panel lines on the aircraft, and you wipe off the highest parts, you know, the rest of the wing itself, just leaving behind that shadow effect. Here's the whole plane all finished up sunk right into those panel lines, even on the decal. I think it looks really good. So super happy with this result. And I'll definitely be trying this again, this combo of Gauzy and Flory down the road. Now I'm gonna do a very small amount of oil streaking. I don't do a ton of this on aircraft, especially at this scale, but I think it adds a little bit of variation to the basic wash that we did before. So I'm gonna put a few dots of brown on here and then get another brush lightly dampened with some enamel thinner and streak those down in the direction of the airflow. It's a relatively subtle result, but I like it. Adds a little character to the plane. And to wrap up our weathering, I'm going to do a couple oil stains using Ammo's Fresh Engine Oil. This is after I've applied a matte clear coat using Ammo's Lucky Matte Varnish. Just going to put a few dabs around the filler caps on the wings here and pull that back again with the airflow. Nice little result. Okay, moment of truth. Time to take those canopy masks off. For this, when I use that liquid mask, I just get a toothpick and I very, 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 very carefully go along the outside edges of each of these individual glass panes and try and pull it off. It'll, it'll peel up, kind of like pulling gum off the bottom of your shoe almost and stick into a little ball. Just try and control that, get it into a little clump and pry it off. Make sure that doesn't stretch into other areas that you don't want the paint removed. You can see here I had to pick the plane up and get nice and close. And then inevitably, some little bits of paint are gonna come off where you don't want them to. What I do here is I come back with a really fine point Sharpie and I fill in those lines in the canopy structure that accidentally got pulled off. First I use a black and then I use a little bit of like an aluminum here to get a nice effect as if that part of the paint had chipped off. So it covers up your mistakes nicely. But check that out, looks pretty good. 
Nice clean greenhouse canopy. Here's another view. You can see the crewmen in there pretty nicely. Hey fellas. I keep my propeller weathering pretty simple. For this I'm just using a metallic pencil and going along the leading edges of each prop blade here just to give a subtle chipping effect. Look like these have, have gotten some use. We're getting real close to the finish line here. Attaching a few extra pieces that I left off during the weathering process, didn't want to knock these off. These are the pitot tubes, just other external sensors on the aircraft. So we're gonna pop those on there. We'll attach that propeller hub with a little bit of super glue. Find a nice position and stick that on there. And then for our antenna cable, I'm using some 1700 scale rigging wire, or 1350 scale rigging wire that I had left around. Um, put a dab of super glue on each one of these receiving poles here, antennas, I'm not really sure what they're actually called, and just gently stretch that along, super glue in place. Add one more here that ties into the cockpit itself. And then I almost forgot, we've got a couple viewports on either side of the fuselage here. Gonna pop those on with a small bit of plastic cement. And that, my friends, is a completed 172 scale Academy TBF-1 Avenger. Please mind the styrofoam block here. I'm just using this for temporary display purposes. If you stay tuned to the channel, I am gonna do a whole tutorial video on a base that I'm gonna make up for this with some cool water effects. Super excited to do that and share it with y'all. So keep your eyes peeled for that. It'll be coming in the next week or so. And if you enjoy the video, please hit that like button. I really appreciate the support. It helps me grow the channel. Um, if you enjoyed the content again, you can hit that subscribe button for more awesome scale modeling content. I try to post something new just about once a week, so if you hit that notification button, you'll get a little pop-up whenever I put something on the channel. Alright, that's it for me today. Thanks everybody for watching. Until next time, be well, happy building, and cheers.